Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We got some updates for paginated reports inside of Power BI, along with some awesome community updates. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Will Reynolds over at Sierra Interactive's got a video looking at how you can combine PPC and SEO data to find areas to win in the SEO marketplace. Of course, he's doing this with Power BI, which I love, and it's a great way for digital marketers to use Power BI to find those insights where they can win in the SEO battle. As always, Will does a great job of walking through this. This is more of if you've already got your data in, there's other videos that he's got that shows you how you can pull that data in. If you're interested in this, I've got a link up above for the video as well as down in the description below. So go check it out if you are in the digital marketer space. Marco Russo over at SQL BI has got a blog post looking at the difference between strong relationships and weak relationships inside of Power BI. This was introduced when composite models came about for Power BI back in 2018, and it's something you need to be aware of if you're building models using composite models. This can absolutely affect performance. It can also affect how the Vertipak engine actually goes and gets that data. If you are using direct query along with composite models, I definitely recommend you read this blog post. It is really important that you understand this concept as it can have a lot of effects on how that data is getting pulled. And Marco, as always, does a great job of explaining it. Be sure to check out the link down in the description below, along with all the links for this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Chris Webb's got a blog post looking at custom format strings inside of Power BI. Now that that is available as of the September 2019 release of Power BI Desktop, the part one of this article dealt with numbers. This blog post deals with dates and times, and he walks through different examples of how you can use that custom format string to get the result and format that you want for those date and time outputs. He's got a ton of examples going through this blog post and looks at you know what those outputs are for you so that you can take a look without having to spend that time to go through it all yourself, which is awesome. He's also got a PBIX file at the bottom of the blog post that you can download to look at those examples yourself. Seth Bauer over at Power BI Tips and Tricks has got a blog post looking at do's and don'ts when you're working with a SharePoint folder. So you've got your PBIX file in that SharePoint folder. Back in my previous team, I actually used this approach when working with a Power BI desktop file just to make sure that the rest of my team had access to that file if they needed it. And the whole reason you would want to host that PBIX file in a SharePoint folder is you can go through get data and pull that PBIX in and it will automatically refresh whatever's in that file contents every hour. So if you like open up that Power BI desktop file, maybe update your report or you do a refre manual refresh on the data, Power BI service will pick that up within an hour and everything will be reflected without you having to do anything. So it's pretty cool that you can use that approach when working with Power BI desktop files. However, Seth goes through some examples of why this may be problematic depending on how you work with that Power BI desktop file. So if you're using that approach or you're considering that approach, definitely check out this blog post and be aware of what you should do and should not do. Again, links down below. Chris Finland from the Power BI team dropped a blog post where he's looking at updates for paginated reports in the Power BI service. There were a couple things in this blog post, but they're pretty cool. First off, commenting is now available for paginated reports. This has been available for dashboards and Power BI reports. It is now available for paginated reports. Secure Embed is also now supported with paginated reports, so that's very cool. And the other item, which I actually heard a lot of buzz about on Twitter over this last week, was the fact that there is an RDL migration tool available if you're coming from on-premises and you wanna to go to paginated reports in the Power BI service. So this tool will really help you understand what needs to change when moving that to the cloud. That migration tool is available on GitHub, so you can go get that and check it out. But overall, I like these updates for paginated reports inside of Power BI. It's just bringing it more in line with the other items that are inside of Power BI, making for that holistic kind of experience. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button 
And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.